Hello and welcome back again. Today we are looking at polymorphism. What is polymorphism? The ability of an object to take many forms or we can say the ability of different classes of object to respond to the same message in different class specific ways. Any Java object that can pass more than one is a test is considered to be polymorphic object. We have different ways for implementing polymorphism. One, we can implement polymorphism through the use of method overloading. This is where we have a class having different methods, but all these methods carry the same name. Class having methods with the same name. Two, we can implement polymorphism through method overriding. Here we have a child or a derived class as the same method as the base class or the parent class, sometimes referred to as a superclass. So the derived class can override the parent class method by simply changing the content of that particular method. We have rules to follow if you're going to implement a method overriding. Rules number one, we have applies to inherited methods only must have the same return type, must not have restrictive access modifiers. When you're talking of access modifiers, we are basically uh, talking about is it a private method, is it a public method? That's what we mean by access modifiers. And abstract methods must be overridden. Static and final methods cannot be overridden. And lastly, this is basically what we refer to as runtime polymorphism. Now let's look at it from this code snippet. Now we have a class A and that class A has method to override. We have class B that also has method to override. It extends class A and by the virtue of the fact that it has extended class A, this implies that it has inherited method to override. However, if we look at class B, it has its own method that is method to override. Now, if you look at this method to override, it doesn't have the same content as method to override of class A. Simply what you've done is that we have implemented method overriding by changing the content of method to override. Method to override in class A is supposed to output I'm in class A. Method to override in class B, it's going to output something totally different. That is, I'm in class B. So, simple as that. That is method overriding. Now, what about method overloading? We can implement method overloading in different ways. Number one method that we can use to implement method overriding is by use of parameters. Let's look at the class we have here. This is class calculator. Now, if you look at class calculator, it has two methods. And these methods have the same name. That is sum of values. But where is the difference? If you look at the first method, that is sum of values, it has three parameters. That is int A, int B, int C. And it's supposed to return the sum of the three values that will be held by A, B, and C. Now, if you look at the second method, still bearing the same name, sum of values, but the distinction comes in the number of parameters. This one has two parameters, int A, int B, and it will return the sum of the two values held by A and B. Now, we can also implement method overloading through the use of return types. Again, let's look at this method in class calculator. This is another class. Now we have public double sum of values. And then we have parameters double A, double B. And it's supposed to return the, the sum of A and B. Again, we have the same method. And this method called sum of values carries the same number of parameters as the previous method, sum of values that we have seen, which is of double type. It has two parameters, int A, int B, and it's supposed to return the sum of A plus B. Now, this tells us that we've been able to distinguish between the first method and the other method through the use of return type. First one is a double and the second one is of integer type.
Overloading can also be applied in constructors. Now remember constructor is a special type of method that is used to initialize objects of a class. Now we have a class named myOverload. Now if you look at it we have two methods that seem to carry the same name as the class name and that is how you identify a constructor. Now the first constructor has two parameters. Now we have different types of constructors. We have default constru constructors. We have parameterized constructors. These are parameterized constructors. Now this first constructor has two parameters int id string name and then it basically assigns the values that will be carried by the two parameters to the global declarations of variables that we have at the top here. We have another constructor and this constructor carries or rather it has uh, three parameters int id string name and id int age. Now again it will assign the same values that have been carried by id name and age to student age, student identity and student name as shown here. So let's go to Eclipse and look at how we can be able to implement these concepts using Java. Okay, back to Eclipse. Let's get back to our project. Remember the, the name of our project was Learn Java Basics. Uh, we're going to have to create a new package. I just love working with package. Uh, you can create these classes without having to create packages. It's just the way I like to work. So, so it's com. There now that I have my package, right click on it and then I create a new class. Calculator. I want to make sure that it has, I want to make sure that it has main method. So I check that checkbox and then I click finish. There it is. Now we're going to use the same examples in our earlier discussion. And therefore we need to create uh, methods with similar names. The name of the class was calculator. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think the name of the method was sum of values and then it's supposed to have parameters. Okay, now that we have that, we need we need another method bearing the same name parameters yeah okay so it need to return we need to return since we are doing a summation here we can return the sum of those three you also need to return here since it's not a void method that's why it will be an error if we did not return there okay now that we have that, let's work through assignment. You can declare uh, value one, value two, value three. So let's assign value. Let's assign values to the. Value one we can assign maybe sixty. We can assign twenty. We can assign probably ten. Okay. Now that we have that, the next step we need to do is to call these methods. Remember these methods are are not static methods and that implies that we need to create an object of the class. 
how do we create an object of the class? The name, the name of the class is calculator. We work with obj. Okay. Now that we have created the object as obj, uh, we need now to use the obj and then that allows us to be able to access we can access the first one there okay uh, let me see can we access the other one using the same objects there we have that but we need to output the values we need to output the values and how do we go about outputting these values that is the sum of the computations you can probably say uh, system.out.println we have that Okay, we have an error here it implies we need to use our objects there we are okay uh -huh. again system dot out to print a len close it there and then we use our obj obj there we go can I see if we can do some concatenation here sum of let's first output let's first see if it's able to give us an output so save and run there we're getting an output so for the first one it's giving us 80 and the next one is giving us 90 what we have done is that uh, it's able to check the parameters so it's calling sum of values based on the number of parameters now it will check uh, how many parameters do we have here? We have three parameters and the call requires two parameters. Therefore, it will skip that method and move on to the next method. Just two parameters. This is the method that will be executed for the first call there. For the second call, again, it, it has three parameters and therefore it's looking for sum of values that has three parameters. And that happens to be the first one. And basically what will happen is that these values the values that have been held by value 1 value 2 value 3 will be directly transferred value 1 will be transferred to a value 2 will be transferred to b value 3 will be transferred to c same applies to the first call here value 1 will be transferred to a value 2 will be transferred to b and then we're going to have a return because it's going to have to do summation in both methods and then return the values and you can see the values are, have been output here but you can be able to tell uh, what kind of output this is and therefore we need at least to uh, we can make our our re, re, we can readjust the output so that we can get a better output and for that reason let's use concatenation the sum of the sum of value one value two and value 3 
is let's pick the same one and bring it on the next call don't have to retype these the value one value two you can say ends sorry it's the first one that we can say end because we only need uh, two calls two values or two parameters yeah okay say is there okay let's try it again save and run okay the sum of 60 and 20 is the sum of 60 20 and 10 is okay we can modify it a little bit here just create some spaces there and then here save and run again there so this is basically what we refer to as method overloading method overloading by use of parameters now let's try it again using the other method that we looked at because we said there are two different ways that we can implement overloading by use of parameter and by use of type so what you're going to do is we just we are just going to readjust this class just adjust it a bit to demonstrate use of by type uh, we can make this double you can demonstrate using just two okay there now now under this call we are going to have uh, that's two so the sum of value one value two is that the sum of value one value two and value three is that now here is what we're going to do we have to remove that one okay then we have to declare double double talk of value one again value 2 the type is different let's use different names let's use val1 val2 okay you can say val1 is equals to maybe 45.5 then val2 can be equal to 15.8 there so uh, here we're calling val1 and this will go to that will be val2 we need to make some adjustments here this is val1 this is val2 so we have those two so basically what's what's supposed to happen is that uh the compiler will check we have sum of values and it's carrying integer values and therefore it will go and look for the method that's supposed to be computing or that is of integer type uh the first one is not integer type and therefore it will bring the values to the second method and then it will do the computations and re return the results the second one it will check 
it's supposed to be carrying uh, double values and therefore it will check which one has a double type and realize the first method as double type and therefore the values will be brought to this particular method and then it is going to do the computations and then return the sum of the two values let's save and run again there it's able to give us the correct answer that is 60 plus 20 is 80 and then 45.5 plus 15.8 will give us 61.3 that's basically how we are able to implement method overloading by using parameters and by using the type that is the return type okay now let's move on to the next exercise and we're going to be looking at constructor overloading so back to our package right click a new bus and you can call it my overload yeah my overload then I can check that box because I want this class to have a method, to have a main method created automatically. There it is. Okay. So remember we said a constructor is basically a special method that has the same name as the class. So let's create, create it. Public. My overload. Let me start like that. You're going to have two of them. Public my overload. There. What we're going to do is make sure that the parameters are a bit different. And age. Um, string name. Then we can have the second one as int age and another parameter string name. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Now we have it there. So now in the main method, we will need to be able to create objects of our class. So we have my overload say obj my overload there created that object that one will allow us to access these methods i mean sorry will allow us to be able to instantiate this particular class so we say obj and then my So let's use a different approach let's use a different approach for us to access this we can create we can first create a method as we had seen in our previous example say void and then display yeah this is the best approach we can use just output and we're going to output these particular values we have age concatenate that one with uh, student age which we have not yet created and we are going to create it then name and we can say student name not yet create not not yet declared we're going to declare it and then we have identity or roll number if you like and then this can be there remember we have not created the three of them and we're going to create them here we declare them here as global global variables yeah so you can have int student age student 
identity and then we declare the other one as string student name there so basically what's supposed to happen is this let's first do this uh, let's give it what let's give it for the first one we can say maybe 25 25 then can be Agnes and for the identity we can have that's okay uh, we can have another object rbj2 new my overload then can have maybe 32 can have gen just some random numbers there so we need the obj to call display method okay we need the obj to to call again display there okay now that we have that, this cannot be inside there, that's why we are, we are with these errors, we need to put it somewhere out there. Yeah. Cannot have um, that inside the main method. Okay, let's now look at it. Yeah, any error? Yeah, we are not yet through. So we need to do this. So this is carrying three parameters starting with age, name, and ID. So we have student age will be assigned age. We'd have student name assigned name. Then we can have student identity assigned ID there okay now this one requires only two so we can have student age assigned age we can have student name assigned to name there so what will happen is this when this one is instantiated it will look for a constructor that requires or that will accept three parameters now these are parameterized constructors so the first one accepts three and for that reason since the arguments are three we are going to have this one instantiated now for the second one uh, the second one we have to change something uh, age name yeah age name it was as, that only has two so second one we look for the one that has two arguments and you will realize that the second constructor has two arguments or two parameters within it and this is the one that's going to be instantiated so let's save and run let's see what happens there it is it has worked can make some adjustments here so the output can look a bit better mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. no here yeah that is age that is name and that's the identity yeah so what happens is that if this one is instantiated it's going to assign 
these global variables that you are seeing here, they will be assigned the values that have been carried by these uh, variables. Because we are moving 15 to age, we are moving Agnes to name, and then we are moving 45, 28 to ID, and then we are, doing, we are signing we assign once we assign the values now we have student age as uh, 15 we have student identity as 45 28 we have student name as agnes yeah you can you can also do this use the this keyword still works this this it implies basically uh this field that belongs to this particular class, my overload, you can do likewise here. This, this, there. Let's save and run it again just to confirm that it's working. Yeah, it's working. Now, for the second one that has two parameters, you can see we are using a method display to output the values that have been assigned, but for identity, we did not assign any value and for that reason you get a zero because we do not have a value that has been set for student identity so guys that's it see you in the next video bye bye for now